Hello, welcome to episode 8 of the collection. We're not going to do box number 8. There is so many pickups I've got during summertime. I found this store in South Australia that sells discs equivalent to how you would find discs as cheap at a second-hand shop. And I went nuts. There were $1 discs, there were $3 discs, there was $10 box sets. I couldn't say no. Before I do get started on the boxes, I've got a few more extra discs I wanted to show off on pickups. Okay, this is Violent City with Charles Bronson, and it's sort of a precursor to the Death Wish series. It's, and lives up to its name, Violent City. It's a good, good title. Next was one I watched for the, you know, the current season. Like this is Deadly Outbreak, and this is actually really good. This is sort of like a die-hard film on a low budget. Instead of Bruce Willis, you've got Jeff Speakman. Instead of Alan Rickman, you've got Ron Silver. You know, so yeah, it's not bad. Not a bad little film. Next we have Vigilante. This was pretty cool. So this is good pressing. It has a commentary track, good sound, and yeah, widescreen. All right, these ones are to replace the original pan and scan issues that I've already got. So this is finally got the widescreen of Forrest Gump to replace the pan and scan one I had. A widescreen of Patriot Games. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think I've already got this on widescreen, but no. Well. And this one, well, I've already got the box set that I'll show at a later date. But I wanted to get this disc because this one has special attention that's being made to the sound when it comes to uh, taking this six track booming deep bass soundtrack and shoving it onto this little AC3. I'm curious to hear what it sounds like, I've heard a good thing. And lucky last, before I get onto the box sets, is Lethal Weapon. The original, this is widescreen. As you saw in the last video if you watched it, I only had the pan and scan so yeah it's got a little, little thing there but besides that it's okay. All these discs are absolutely superb. The Road to Collection with Bob Hope, Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour in all four of these films had the same three actors. These are all the black and white first four release that were done by Paramount at the time. I love how they break the fourth wall. You know, you would never see that back then in the day. They're just fun, silly movies. Each one of them has their own flavor to them even though they're all very similar they're really good fun uh, morocco was my favorite i think with the first uh utopia was really good as well singapore which was the first one i wasn't a real big fan of yeah the road to bali is really good i like that one as well but that's not on this set next up we have the dirty harry collection now this is the japanese version so it has the Japanese subtitles hard encoded onto the bottom of the screen. But it's still fine because it's a widescreen pressing, so those subtitles are outside of the actual vision of the screen. I was wrapped to actually go through and watch all these films in a row. When I've grown up, I've watched these films at friends' sleepovers or with my dad perhaps or something like that and although I've seen all of them I don't really I hadn't really taken them in you know so it was good to sit down and watch the whole set in a row so next time someone comes up to me and talks about Dirty Harry I'm pretty sure I'll remember most things about it now. Uh, this was the first one where he's quite young and looking very schmicko and yeah it was a really really good bad guy that made this movie if you ask me. It was also the introduction to Dirty Harry, which was a new type of character. This is the booklet that goes with it. Like I said, it's all in Japanese. Okay, so next up we have Dirty Harry 2. The in four, no, Magnum Forks, that's right. The second one Magnum Forks. This is actually my favourite of the set. 
it had a really good storyline where cops were more dirtier than Dirty Harry and Harry had to go clean up the town a bit and, had, and it was it, that was my favourite game. This is where things started going south. This is Enforcer. It was just, it was not a very good film overall. I didn't think this one was great. Nor did I like number four, which was Sudden Impact. Although it's famous for its, go ahead, make my day time. Yeah, it didn't really do it for me overall storyline. My favorite was, I guess number two, number one, and then number five, the Deadpool. That's really cool. I love all the Jim Carrey and Guns N' Roses and all that kind of stuff. It's cool. Number three, Enforcer, would be my third, fourth favourite. And then my least favourite would be this one. I just didn't get into this one at all. I felt like by this point we're kind of dragging the ball and I really just wanted to get onto number five. Tell you what, recent movie I watched of his was uh, Richard Jewell, and that wasn't too bad either. That's the back cover, by the way. Okay, next up is James Dean. Uh, this is the complete box sets of his work. Well, he only did three movies, so yeah, all of them are here. And a extra documentary, which I haven't got around to watching yet, of his life. Okay, so we've got East of Eden, which was uh, when... Well, he was trying to prove to his dad that he's a man who can look after the family just like he can and his dad doesn't ever approve of him and he ends up taking his brother's girl fiance and, and sending his brother crazy and then this came along and I was actually quite surprised. It's funny when I watched this, um, growing up I used to watch Rage, which was a music video program every morning on Saturday and there was a song that was on there called Rush Rush by Paul and it had a video clip with Keanu Reeves that had some scenes that were very similar to Rebel Without a Cause. Now I hadn't seen Rebel Without a Cause and I'm watching the music video thinking oh this must be from an upcoming movie or something like that and I haven't thought about it since until just recently I chucked on Rebel Without a Cause and he's standing out the back of the, uh, at the planetarium and the gang come up and start stabbing his tires. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, this looks familiar. All the dominoes start falling into place. Anyway, Giant, I've still yet to see that one. I've, it's an epic. And uh, I'll get around to it. Elizabeth Taylor's in it, so I have to give it a chance anyway. And all these are widescreen, really lovely digital sound. Good pressing. This is uh, Forever James Dean. I'm not really interested in the bio of them, I don't think. I'll, I might whack it on if, it's, if I get bored enough in isolation. The next box I got was Meet Me in St. Louis. The first time I had watched it. And I was looking really forward to it because I've been watching a lot of musicals and I started this whole journey on MGM Musicals watching this documentary called That's Entertainment. Anyway, so in That's Entertainment they spoke very highly of Meet Me in St. Louis and how much of a huge production it was and how much it brought back in. And I'm like, oh, well, that's a must-have. And Julie Garland, you know, I have to. And so, uh, yeah, I found this for only $10 and I was like, oh, great, here we go. So I put it on and I, I gotta say, I wasn't really blown away by it. I, I will have to give it another go. I didn't have, it, it didn't hit me in the field, so to speak. Nice widescreen pressing, which is always good too. Okay, next up is United Artists at War. Now I bought this because I've been a bit of a fan of the United Artists films. And this was reasonably priced, only $10 for three widescreen films. And I thought, hey, it couldn't be that bad, and I was actually quite surprised. There was a movie in here, I'd like to start off with it if that's okay with you guys, it's called Devil's Brigade, and it's sort of like, how do I put it, The Dirty Dozen, and it's about the English and the Canadians and the Americans, and the Americans are all the ones that have escaped from other places and stuff like that, who are really like the, you know, the, the, the lowest of the low when it comes to soldiers. Really good film, I like that one. Next up is Clark Gable Collection. Again, another cheap bundle that I found, you know, four movies for $10, you know, and all Clark Gable films. Now, seeing I'm getting into a lot of the older films lately, I thought, hey, I'll give them a go. 
I wasn't overly blown away. The pressings were really good, the printings were really good. I did like that, unlike the Road 2 movies where some of the movies join up on the same disc, where for instance, uh, side three will be the start of one movie and the end of another movie. This one is every movie has its own disc, which is good. I've watched Honky Tonk and I watched Red Dust. And they were okay, but they weren't mind blowing, you know? The, I, I, I was expecting, I guess, a little bit more. Okay, I think that's all. Oh no, one last one. I watched the old Pride and Prejudice, the 1939 one. Yeah, and, or was it 1940? It was a lot of outfits that were left over from Gone in the Wind, so it wasn't time period, and it really upset a lot of the uh, Pride and Prejudice fans and Jane Austen fans. And I got advised that if I am going to watch Pride and Prejudice, that this is the way to watch it. This is the best version that you can get of Pride and Prejudice in the way of acting, directing, production-wise, stuff like that, costumes. Uh, yeah, so I thought, well, look, it's there and it's cheap. One day I'll be sophisticated enough to be actually sit down and take this in. But for now, it will find a nice place up on my box shelf. So yeah, that's my box sets. Now let's get on to the rest of the pickups. And this is one I mentioned in my previous video that you just saw. LA Story, wide, not widescreen, it's pan and scanned and it's digital sound. I intended to buy this because I thought it was the widescreen version. As I mentioned in my previous video, the Japanese version of LA Story is, is also pan and scanned. I think I'm just going to have to suck it up and get it for a <laughs> Okay, next up, we got from, this is from uh, the same guy I bought LA Story from. This is not from what I call the Walmart of Laserdiscs. This is from another guy that was selling some, just some different discs that I hadn't seen usually. And this is, uh, yeah, how, it's, what is the late shift, and it's Letterman, Leno, and the Battle of the, the Tonight Show. Two heads fighting for the late night crown. One head's got a roll. Actors playing David Letterman and Jay Leno, and I have not seen the movie yet, but it just looked interesting to see that story sounded interesting. Okay, next up we have the widescreen digital sound version of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Sergio Leone. Um, Ennio Marconi is famous for this soundtrack especially. Uh, this has 14 minutes of extra footage that has never been seen in the US, it says on the back, plus a trailer, which is always good. Uh, yeah, not a bad Warner's pressing actually. This is one of the better Warner pressings. Next up is another addition to the signature collection. This is the Apostle. Again, haven't seen it and I got it again from the same bloke that I got LA Story from and uh, the Late Night Shift from and I just saw it in his list and I was like, there's another signature disc I haven't got yet. Uh, this is one of the cheaper ones. I don't know why. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Billy Bob Thornton's in it so that's always good and directed by uh, Robert Duvall and also starring Robert Duvall as well. Yeah, always nice to get another signature disc. I hope to get the whole set one day. Next up is With Honours. I got this because Joe Pesky's in it. And yeah, again, haven't watched this one. Got this again from the guy that I bought those other discs from. I think it's just, oh no, it's widescreen with digital sound and Warner Brothers pressing, so. Fingers crossed. Oh, this is a goodie. Another guy, another one from the same guy. Luckily, this doesn't have any of the uh, any of the numbering on it. These a lot of these ones that this guy sold me had these numbers on the top. We'll get to this next. And uh, yeah, the Sand Pebbles. Steve McQueen. This is a Fox pressing, widescreen with digital sound. And uh, yeah, anything with Steve McQueen in it, I'm just going to buy anyway. If it's Steve McQueen, I'm going to watch it, don't worry. Same with Charlton Heston, believe it or not. I wasn't a big fan of Charlton Heston growing up, but as I've watched Ben-Hur, ever since then I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I've got a whole new impression of this guy. And the Amiga Man's meant to be really good. Sold at 70 sci-fi. Um, let's see, is it widescreen? I don't think it's widescreen. Yeah, widescreen and digital sound and another Warner's pressing, so lovely. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, next up we have Albino Alligator and I bought this purely because I've never heard of it and I was like, what's this? And it has uh, an audio commentary from Kevin Spacey. 
Oh, that's aged well. Widescreen, AC3. Another widescreen with AC3, this is Homegrown. I've heard of it, I haven't really heard much about it though. But look, we'll give it a go. It has a huge cast, that's what got me. Look, it has Billy Bob Thornton, Bon Jovi, Hank Azaria, Judge Reinhold, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kelly Lynch, John Lithgow. I mean, that, that's, that's... Next up, I got this because of the cover. How good is that? That is a nice looking cover, if I may say so myself. Um, looking up, watching the trailer of this, I found out it's a film that just gets quite into uh, race relations and stuff like that. And, uh, yo, there you go, it's directed by John Singleton, the guy who made Boys in the Hood, so that should even further uh, my point. Anyway, uh, widescreen, AC3, John Voight, what a cover! I just love that. Next one I got, yes, I know it's another Hugh Grant film, but I got it because of Alan Rickman. I'm, I'm a sucker for Alan Rickman films, and I'm curious to see what this is going to be like. The, the title has got my attention. So sometimes I buy discs just on the off chance, on the whim, just, and uh, yeah. So that's my most recent pickups. Everything except for the good, the bad, and the ugly that was mixed in from another sale. So yeah, pretty happy with that. All right, next up. This I've been chasing after for a long time. This is Akira Kurosawa's Dreams in widescreen and digital sound. I had originally watched it years ago on television when it was played late night on a on a on a more obscure TV station in Australia called SBS. I was completely blown away. It's a whole bunch of mini stories that Akira Kurosawa has put together to make an overall thing, and uh, just it's a beautiful film. It is just gorgeous. Okay, next one is The Verdict. I got this because this damn full idealistic crusader has been getting me mad about Sidney Lumet mo movies, John Ford movies, Frankenheimer films. Yeah, I'm just loving some of these uh, Houston films. And yeah, this is another one and it was good. It was okay. I wouldn't say it blew me away. It was okay. Wide screen and it's just digital sound. It's not yeah, digital sound. Okay, next up is another, this was a good one too, Angels with Dirty Faces. Uh, this is starring James Cagney, but it also has Humphrey Bogart in it as kind of a third part in it. And uh, this is about a priest and a rapscallion hoodwinked gangster. And one of them, they both get a caught, one of them gets caught and one of them gets away. Sorry, that's right. And the one that got caught, spent his time in prison and grew up knowing that side of the law and the one that got away ended up becoming a Catholic priest and overall uh, this was the first James Cagney film that I was like oh now I get why everyone loves James Cagney that's a good one I really like that movie this one is a late release and that's the main reason I chose it I found it really cheap and I thought hey that might add some value to an extent to my collection but you know I, I watched it with a friend who loves her Nora Ephron's and romantic comedy films and even she said it doesn't really stack up to the rest of them as much and I, I gotta agree this one and Mixed Nuts was the two Nora Ephron films that just didn't quite he, she didn't quite nail it you yeah. know widescreen AC3 I believe Alright, this is Wagons East, widescreen, digital sound, with uh, John Candy and Richard Lewis. And it's not a, it's not the greatest film, it's just, I, I want to get the whole set of the John Candy. Next up is Tucker. I found out about this movie from the book that came with the, the definitive collection Star Wars trilogy. They mentioned he worked on this film, Tucker, with Francis Ford Coppola. I'm like, oh. I, I looked up what Tucker cars were and it was quite interesting seeing how high tech they were at the time. I thought I'd check out the movie and it's a, it's a pretty decent film. It's not gonna blow your mind, but it's a good history lesson in Tucker cars. 
Okay, here it is. The one I've been talking about for weeks and weeks. The Great Escape widescreen edition with digital sound. And yeah, the way you're meant to watch it on Laserdisc instead of the old version that I had. Steve McQueen, James Gardner, Richard Attenborough, who yeah was cool too. Really wrapped to have this one. I can tell it's going to be watched a lot. Ah, Meg Ryan again. <laughs> this time with Matthew Broderick. And uh, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, it might take me a while to get around to watching this one, so... I'll let you know when I have, if it's tolerable. Oh, this one looks really good. I saw this on the post, and it was a bit more expensive than the average disc. It was going for about uh, $30, I think. But it was sealed, and it has this... See, the reason why I like this one is because it has this card in it that has a scratch and sift kind of thing. Now, I don't know if it's going to work still, but it's never been used, so... I was like, oh, okay, well, um, I'm going to watch a movie with a couple of friends and we'll, we'll try it out and see if that scratch and sniff thing works. Next up is Can Can. I can't Can Can, but Frank Sinatra puts on an okay performance. Shirley MacLaine, though, is fantastic. I really, I've, I fell in love with Shirley MacLaine so much that uh, through this and the apartment that I'm pretty much chasing after anything that's uh, uh, Shirley MacLaine. I, she's so much fun on screen, so much presence, so much positive energy, you know? And uh, yeah, look, Can Can's okay. It's just up there with, you know, a lot of those Fox musicals that were only like half musical and then they were trying to do a plot line with it and it was a very weak plot line too. Another good example is Take Me Out to the Ball Game with he did with Gene Kelly. Okay, next up. Oh, Shirley MacLaine again. Irma La Douce, which is translated to Irma the Sweet. And this is Jack Lemmon and, of course, directed by Billy Wilder. And this is another one of the Billy Wilder films that you must have up there with The Apartment. Uh, I really love Kiss Me Stupid. I know it's not one of his classics, but I liked it. And yeah, I'm going to keep chasing after more and more and more of the Billy Wilder films because he has yet to fail. Okay, so this takes me back to the first guy that I was buying my disc from. This guy had some different stuff in there, like Wagons East and uh, yeah, and Blank Man and stuff like that. And look, I'm not personally a big fan of this movie, but it's tolerable. It's not great at all. But my partner, who's a big Damon Whalen's fan, loves this movie. And I've got to say, there are some funny little jokes in there, like the outro to the previous episode. Next up, we have another late release that's a reissue. The Man Who Would Be King, starring uh, Michael Caine and Sean Connery, and directed by John Huston. And it also has Christopher Plummer as the kind of the narrator of the movie. And yeah, good movie. Really, really nice. It wasn't as emotional and 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 dark as I was hoping. Um, it was just, it was a light, lovely, fun kind of comedy. You know, it was good. I didn't mind it. You know, it just seemed like uh, it got very dark at the end for such a light comedy. You know, it was a bit of a twist, but hey, why not? You know. It's cool. I enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Widescreen and digital sound. Warner Brothers pressing. So cool. All right. Next up. Thank you, Spencer. <laughs> it's your fault. I'm hooked on Cary Grant now. So here it is. The the big one. Arsenic and Lace from uh, the Frank Capra classic. And uh, yeah, this is a fantastic film. This is up there with any of your modern screwball comedies that you can come up with. This will match it. If you can sit through black and white, then you would love this movie. It's so good. Cary Grant is over the top in this. And just, I loved it. Absolutely love this film. This is Frank Capra. Next up is Cary Grant at his most romantic. Uh, this is an affair to remember where Cary Grant plays a rich playboy. And then they made a, a, a commitment to meet at the Eiffel Tower. And I believe that she was in a rush to get there and then gets hit by a car and, and then she loses her ability to walk but she doesn't want to tell him and it's, it's such a chick flick, man. I enjoyed it. I don't mind that film at all and if you watch it with a chick, it's, it will 
They'll love it too. But this one was my favourite Cary Grant film so far, Houseboat. It is so much fun. Him and Sophia Loren just connect like Lego. Ah, oh, just love this film. Just absolutely love the the heart, the warmth, the um, the crazy comedy. Sophia Loren. I mean, yeah. Ah, oh, just gorgeous film, Houseboat. So yeah, I'm glad I've got those three. They're my new uh, hits from the Cary Grant. Okay, next up we have. The program. I wasn't overly impressed with the program. This is widescreen, I believe, and digital sound. Yeah, but it's James Kahn. I'm gonna keep it, because it's James Kahn. Next up is John Carpenter's They Live. And yeah, it was it was a good movie, but there was this scene when they were having a fight for one guy to put on the glasses to, to put the other make the other guy wear the glasses, and that just really hit kind of killed the flow of the film. <laughs> um it took me out of it a bit. So here we go again. On the next one is... Or, How I Flew from London to Paris in 25 hours and 11 minutes. This is widescreen with digital sound, which is awesome. And it's okay. It has some funny moments. It ha has a real... Mad, 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 mad world vibe to it. I originally had the Japanese version of this, but I've been, I shelled out for the nice American widescreen release with the special features that it comes with. Digital six tracks to surround stereo, widescreen, audio commentary. Oh, I love this movie. This was a lovely movie. The last time I saw Paris. Val, Van Johnson was the one that really blew me away. And there was a little girl in this too. The little the, the daughter in this was absolutely beautiful. The guy fell in love with um, Elizabeth Taylor's sister and then finally met Elizabeth Taylor and they got married. They end up having a kid and he was extremely overly jealous. And there's so much to it, I don't even want to start. But it's one of those movies, like I said, would turn any dad into a big pile of of mush <laughs> and yeah that's why I love the film was Van Johnson overall his his way of getting those emotions out there to uh, through the screen okay next up is the rescuers down under and the rescuers I've been chasing after these two for a while I bought the rescue rescuers towards the start of summer and then eventually found down under later on and yeah I'm wrapped to have these the kids didn't like them at all <laughs> but I really like them so I'm keeping them okay screw you kids oh, I'm keeping it okay this is Blazing Saddles this has a 55 minute interview I'm guessing that's the commentary track yeah it has the commentary track <laughs> cool and it's widescreen mostly that's the important part it's not cutting off the edges of the film Next up is the Santa Claus. Tim Allen becomes Santa Claus. Yeah. It's um, AC3 and widescreen and yeah. it's okay. This is cool. Crosby, Stills and Nash live. And they do all their big hits with um, what you would expect to hear when you hear a Crosby, Stills and Nash mix, you know, with Teach the Children Well and all that kind of stuff. Judy, you know. This was a big disappointment. I'm a big Beatles fan, guys. And this has, what, 20 minutes of music on it? I think it was in total. Yeah, 20 minutes, including the credits. <laughs> and, yeah, when I buy a Laserdisc, I want at least half an hour, or maybe an hour. Yeah, an hour would be fair. 45 to an hour per disc. <sighs> really disappointed. What that was was just a collection of their appearances on the Ready, Steady, Go show. And they, they had a few appearances, but Beatles, when they were performing back in the early 60s, they really powered through their stuff. They were like, get on, power through your song, and get off. And when you go back and look at the concerts back then, they were doing half-hour shows. This is really good movie, Moontrap. And it has Mr. Chekhov, Walter Koenig, 
But what was cool about this was it doesn't show you on the front really and it barely mentions it in it, but uh, Bruce Campbell's in this film. Yeah, so the, it's basically killing aliens. And yeah, Bruce Campbell. Next up is Never on Sunday. Now, how do I pronounce this name? Guys, how do you pronounce this name? I've got no idea. Here, let's put on it in this. Melina McCurry. So that's how you pronounce her name. And yeah, this is a fun movie. Really sweet and has a little touch of innocence to it. Uh, yeah, I really loved it. And the lead actress is fantastic. So much charisma and energy and sparkle. Okay, so next up is My Best Friend's Wedding. Two reasons why I got this. One, it's a Zucker Brothers film, technically. The music in this is a lot of fun. Cameron Diaz is actually pretty good in this. And yeah, it's a nice, sweet, lovely film. Okay, so next up we have... Oh, how cool is this film? Widescreen, digital sound, and Frankenheimer at the wheel. No, no, not, not literally at the wheel. In fact, in this case, it was James Gardner at the wheel. But Frankenheimer was the director of this film. And yeah, you know, he, whatever he... I mean, everything I've watched lately of his has been stunning. So, yeah, that's this one is no exception. This is Sergio Leone again, um, the same guy who made Good, the Bad, the Ugly. And this is Once Upon a Time in America with Joe Pesky and Robert De Niro. And it's a long movie. If you like your mobster films like Casino and Goodfellas, you're missing out if you haven't seen this one yet. Next up is Six Days and Seven Nights with Harrison Ford and directed by Ivan Reitman. That's what I thought it was, yeah. And yeah, this is a fun movie. A really good movie. Um, you can chuck this on with anybody who's, even if they're not a big movie watcher or something like that, it's a really fun adventure movie, you know. So, yeah. This one you can't show to everybody. This is Neil by Mouth. This is very, very dark film. Gary Oldman made a deal with Luc Besson if he was to appear in, I believe, The Professional, or maybe it was Fifth Element, I can't remember. In exchange, Luc Besson would help him produce the film that he wanted to make, which was this, believe it or not, which is all about domestic abuse. It's a hard film to sit through. It really is. Nil by Mouth is stated after the point of Someone getting beaten to the point where they cannot eat. <sighs> okay, next up is The Barclays of Broadway. It was Arthur Freed film. That's what was so cool about this. This was the last Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire film together. Okay, now, yeah, the last one is Amazon Women on the Moon. Um, I believe this is directed by... Yeah, it says Joe Dante, but I thought it was a John Landis film. It is a John Landis film. Okay, so it's lots of small dire uh, lots of small parts directed by different directors. And I got this because of the famous um, video pirate scene where the a bunch of Yarr pirates break onto a ship and and doesn't want video discs because they're not compatible with their system. Uh, yeah, anyway, so... It was a good movie. It was fun, but it wasn't as good as Kentucky Fried. I think Kentucky Fried was better. To be honest, the humour hasn't aged as well either. I don't find anything like... Slap jarringly funny, you know, kind of thing. And, uh... Not much else to say. It's pan and scan. Uh, and it's digital sound. And that concludes all the collection I got lately. Including box sets and... All those single discs, so now I can finally put these away back into the collection. And next episode, we're going to get on to box number eight. Okay, because this has gone on long enough. Till then, thank you for watching. As always, it's really great for you guys to enjoy the show. And, uh, goodbye. Help yourself, mates. A chest full of video discs. Oh, oh what good are they? Can't record on them.